<laughs> Skimming through the modern depths of the hell called the internet, I figured out how to utilize a thing called social media to further relish my quest for knowledge. During my quest, I had stumbled upon Malice Doll, a very odd 3D animated Japanese movie, or OVA, created in 2001 by a crew of 20 people. Malice at Doll, or Malice Doll, a horror drama set in a post-apocalyptic future where the only living is the robots who have a set routine with other creators, aka humans. First off, I like to point out that this entire series looks like I got trapped into one huge PS1 cutscene, with scenery and landscapes that look like a twisted combo between a live-action Sega CD game, Final Fantasy VII, and the OG Resident Evil. The bizarre, intense, perplexing, irregular, incongruous architecture matches with the dark setting, allowing the audience to feel a sense of dread from the loneliness that the characters feel. Even if it looks like a very bad PS1 cutscene that runs in basically 20 frames per second, it just adds on to the creep factor. I forget to mention that there is a lot of nudity and tentacle monsters in this anime, which is very odd since I found myself viewing it on YouTube. Viewer discretion is advised, as well as a spoiler alert if you are even interested in checking it out yourself. Please like, comment, and share if you enjoy the video. Enter Malice, a sex bot, who spends her days following the same routine of walking and occasionally getting repaired since there are no humans alive to serve her purpose. So her current function and memory is to stroll around looking for customers. そういつは夢なんかじゃないさ、マリス。それはただの記憶だ。こう印刷の。気を悪く社会マリス。そんなことないだって私はどうりなのか。今日も行くんだね。散歩に。だってそれは私の仕事なんだもん。宅なんか特
This movie is so dark. Everything about it is dark and dingy and depressing. And yet again, giving that feeling of being alone. As I reiterate again, this gives a whole vibe of a PS1 horror game, like Resident Evil or Silent Hill. And I kind of dig that. Just listen to this audio right here. I nearly shit my pants when I first saw this scene, and this is only like 10 minutes in already the e in the episode, so I'm already confused already on what the plot is and what the plot is going to be and when shit's going to get real, and I thought shit was going to get real at the second, but no, this is just another character, another friend of Malice's, who just happens to be a plumber of the robot system of whatever, whatever hierarchy they're in, but... This is Melissa Piper, and she literally only speaks in whistles. Konnichiwa, Melissa. How did you get hurt? You are also hurt. I am also hurt. I am also hurt. Do you want to get rid of the repair? But... You are also hurt. I am also hurt. Now, this thing where Malice kisses everyone because the only thing she can offer is a running motif. It occurs and reoccurs a lot during this end of the episode and the next two and when I say episodes this is also a movie but also not a movie that's how our ovas are like I don't know why they're structured like that most are structured like this per episode but there are three episodes and um you'll see this a lot and it'll be a lot worse Okay, this is the part where we meet Devo Dukasite. You guessed it, a giant killer machine robot. A machine whose purpose is designed to destroy foreign invaders, which Lucasite is an appropriate name, because Lucasite is a white blood cell that destroys foreign invaders. Melissa Piper and, Mal and Malice, um, ugh, tongue twister. Melissa Piper and Malastall escape successfully, and after narrowly escaping, Malice can finally reach to the repair room to meet the repair bot to fix her oily self. It seems like the repair is close by, but in this depressing hallway, who knows? Everything is so dark and gringy. It reminds me of Midgard from Final Fantasy VII. And a couple of locales from the OG Resident Evil series where the backgrounds and foregrounds were pretty much pre drawn. The whole scale of this city or red light district, it's not appropriately shown or scaled it seems to be huge and filled with many passageways and secret entrances much familiar to Hogwarts where everywhere was an entrance to something or an exit and there was secret passages everywhere after roaming around the dark dingy hallways Malice meets a spectral entity which looks like a little girl It is shown that the little girl is non-existent and 
should be a spectral or could be a spectral entity because malice cannot scan. There's nothing organic or metal about this creature. So this spectral entity leads malice on into the quote correct quote way. And we see that the oil that's leaking has leaked more and the damage to malice is going to be irreparable. It's a race against time and malice has to reach the repair bot before she breaks apart and eventually shut down. Malice finally meets the repair bot, which looks like the moon from Majora's Mask. Yeah, that creepy thing. This also looks creepy as well. And lo and behold, it is not the repair bot. It is something else. And that little spectral entity has lured Malice into this crazy looking room, which looks like something that came out of Oddworld. Now, trigger warning here. This is where shit gets really real. And this is where the series or movie starts off being a post-apocalyptic depressing show into a tentacle porn thing and i'm sorry there's no way to sugarcoat it at all i mean this is a japanese piece of media tentacle monsters and giant killer robots Malice technically dies here, and the cries and moans of pain that she is feeling, even though she's a robot, she doesn't feel at all, she just knows she's going to break, and whatever's happening to her is terrible. And she's already on the verge of breaking already, and this tentacle monster had just had to, like, puncture through her, basically turned her into a donut, like, Kakuin, and... Any other character, side character in JoJo's that fucking dies. And eventually she gets the tree treatment from the evil dead. And it's not so pretty. And you couldn't see it. But she's saying, stop, I will break constantly. Because she is going to die. Now this OVA definitely has something to do to deal with trauma. And the trauma of sexual abuse because the themes on sexual abuse pop up a lot after this episode. Even if it's blatant, like what just happened at this moment. And it's pretty crazy. This scene is after the rape of Malice. This is when she wakes up seemingly dead. Oh, she's alive now, but she's literally alive. She's literally flesh and bone and blood. Warm. Warm bodied. And since her trauma, she has been born into a new life. And this is where she kind of like notices that. And she gets that, like, that Spider-Man moment where Tobey Maguire looks in the mirror and goes... However, this change is probably not good at all. Even with her new and improved body, I mean, quote, improved and new, uh, no one recognizes her at all. Not even her friends that she worked with for years, which kind of gives you an oh shit moment.
Holy shit, holy fuck, that was crazy. Joe Admin just got murked like a fucking noob. I don't know why he decided to fight a robot that was like 100 times his size, has chainsaw mandibles and fucking pincers for fucking fingers and hands. Anyway, Malice runs away and manages to escape, just barely, and <sighs> whew, that was brutal. There's a recurring motif where Lucasite just wants to smash Malice's body. Which could also be another metaphorical thing for sex abuse or rape or something. Because this has to be a... This, this has to be... There's so many things wrong with this anime. Anything that happens in this show... And I watched it two times. Nothing's okay. <laughs> Nothing's okay at all. It's just so weird and just ridiculous and just profound that this shit is happening. I, I don't know whoever wrote this. They must have been on some hard acid or methamphetamines or something. Maybe smoking weed. But it, it could have been a lot cooler. But I, I guess they were going for a, a deeper like theme or deeper storytelling. I don't know. Anyways, Melissa Piper, the plumber bot, rescues Malice once again, and except she doesn't recognize Malice, because Malice is human, and she pulls a Spider-Man one where Tobey Maguire is hanging off the the ceiling of his room, and spills blood, and fucking Norman Osborn gets all angry and shit, because he's like this motherfucker Peter Parker, Spider-Man, I didn't notice the whole time. So this just straight up wrecks Melissa Piper, like, literally in half. Now we gotta run that back. She got pwned, absolutely. That was brutal. We were, we we're instant replaying this. Holy shit. That was just brutal. No anime shall go unpunished with an obligatory superpower moment. And this is where it happens. Malice kisses Melissa Piper and a tear drops on her. And then she transforms into some flesh giant robot creature with tentacle appendages and mushy gooey stuff. Similar to like flood spores or something. She basically turns Melissa Piper into a living organism, which fights this giant robot named Devo Lucasite. Which concludes in a Pyrrhic victory, ending in a bang. Now, this is a lot of shit that went on in the past half hour. It definitely did satisfy the urge for an edgy, tentacle monster, action-esque anime with explosions. Hiroya Oku and Michael Bay would have been proud of this work if they even seen it. I'm sure they have. Now, I am not going to summarize this whole thing. I want everyone to watch it for themselves and to experience this weird PS1 looking anime. I call it a anime because it's literally a borderline hentai at this point with the loads of sexual scenes that happen and not so welcoming and consent. If you go further beyond episode 1, or even beyond the first 15 minutes, you'll start to see more characters come out in light, and more plot elements, and a, a little more action. This extremely short series definitely is going crossing the lines of being a body horror slash psychological thriller at the same time. And with a mix of action and hentai, uh, I, I think it does it very well. It does very well in making the viewer feel uncomfortable, because I felt uncomfortable watching this the whole time. And I had headphones on, and I was alone in the dark. Just from the imagery alone of these little flesh creatures and mixing with robots, and it's very steampunky and very biopunky, and... 
I don't know, that just disturbs me. Would I tell your friends to recommend to watch this? No. Would I recommend watching this? No. But if you're curious enough and you just want to be a hipster like me and watch something that no one has ever watched before for the sake of watching it, I'd go ahead and watch it. It's definitely something you watch that's quick and painless and you just want to see a one note story anime that was completely conceived with 100% originality to it and not based off of source material. It does have an odd and weird ending, a very ambiguous one which I seem to can't find out yet, but some other people have in the comment sections on this YouTube link. I posted the link below, just check out the description and the comment section and you can watch this stuff for yourself and research it. Next video I have is going to be on Girls Last Tour, another disturbing manga. I'm going to have to start reading it right now and I will let you guys know in the next video. Please stay tuned, like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts or ideas.